Hi, my name is Jay and today I'm going to be showing you a video about glazing. And this video is not for beginners, it's for those of you who already have an idea about the glazing process. And what I'd like to do today in this video is to show you some new ways that you might use glaze and oxides on your work to, to uh, develop some new surface tech ideas. Now these are some pieces here that I have in front, these small shallow dishes where I used uh, wax resist. I uh, one glaze on first, and then I paint a design in wax, and then I put another glaze over it. And this is one way that you can achieve some really interesting color surfaces. This is another piece where I've used wax over a clear glaze, and then I've painted stains and oxides over it to give it color. And I'd like to show you how to do some of these techniques today. I'm going to start out with the wax technique first, and I'll show you how to do it with another glaze over it and using the oxides and stains over it. So, this is what I'm going to try to emulate is this type of surface and color that I got with this piece. And I started with a glaze called Tea Dust Black. And I covered the surface of it first with the Tea Dust Black. And this is an example here of a piece that I've already covered with the Tea Dust Black and I've let it dry now. Then I take some wax resist comes in a container like this, it's a liquid form of wax, and I'm going to paint a design with a brush over this first layer of glaze. And just to show you how to do that real quickly, just take the brush, I don't want to get too much wax on here, and I just make sure that I painting these sort of petal-like leaf, and I'll just work my way around the bowl like this. Now, as you can see here, the wax is kind of a whitish color, and it's still wet. And before I can continue, I need to let this wax dry really well. So here's a bowl that I've already painted some wax on earlier, and the wax is dry. You can see it's kind of changed to yellowish color. If the wax isn't really dry, it won't work as a resist very well. So it's really important that this glaze layer and this wax design is really dry before you proceed with this technique. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a different color glaze over the top of this. This is the tea dust black, like the one I just showed you before that I already painted. And then I have another example here. This is one I've already painted with wax. And this is over a clear glaze. And on this one I'm going to brush oxides and stains over it. And I'll show you how that works after I do the color glaze over glaze first. Here's another example of an upright form, which I have used wax on, and I painted the wax on in this area in a banding fashion around this piece, and I'll show you how to apply some of the colored oxide and stain on that, but first I want to go back to this bowl here. This is tea dust with wax, and then I'm going to put another layer of Janie's mustard over the surface of this, and it's going to resist the areas where I have the wax. So when this is finished, the places where I have the wax are going to show the first glaze, and the places where I don't have the wax are going to show the two glazes over each other combined. So now I'm ready to apply the second coat of glaze over this. The surface is all dry and prepared well. This is the glaze that I'm going to put over. It's called Janie's Mustard, and I mix it up really good. And I'm going to pour some into this container carefully and as you can see here I'm wearing a glove and I'm doing that because I have a cut on my hand and anytime you have a cut on your hand and you're working with colored glaze or oxides or stains it's a good idea not to get any of that colored material into any kind of a wound that you might have so I've got a glove protecting myself and uh, if you're a little concerned about that or you have any cuts on your fingers, you might want to try using some gloves. It's always a good safety tip. Now I'm going to pour this glaze into this bowl. And I'm going to pour a little bit more and fill it up a little bit more. And 
I'm going to just swish it around. And then I'm just going to pour it out. And as you can see, it's resisting the areas where I have the wax. And what's really important here is that I'm shaking this. And as I'm shaking it, it's helping the glaze bead and run off the wax surface. Shake it good. Okay, that's pretty good. You can see I still have some areas where the glaze stuck to the wax. But I can't do much about that. If I monkey with it, I'll probably look worse than if I just leave it. So I'm just going to shake it a little more. Well, I'm not going to get much more off, so this isn't too, too bad. Again, I'm going to see one color here where the wax is, and the rest of the area I'm going to see a different color. Now, this is a finished example of the wax resist technique that I just showed you, where I have the wax painted here on these lines with a dark glaze underneath, let the wax dry, then I put another glaze over the top of it, and I get a pattern or some kind of a design sort of like this. Now, the other way that I want to show you is to use oxides and stains to get some kind of a surface perhaps like this. And to do this, I use a clear glaze, and sort of like I have here, and then I painted a wax design on it, and then I take different oxides, like I have these containers full of different colored oxides, and a different brush in each one, and I just paint them over the surface of this design, and I'll show you how that works. I mix this oxide up really good in between using it settles a little bit and I'm just gonna make some brush strokes like this and you can see where I have the wax it doesn't allow the color to get over that area it resists the color from getting on that particular area So that's a manganese mixture. There's several oxides in there. And this mixture I have like a straight blue color. And I kind of want these oxides to overlap a little bit to give me some color variation. I'm going to keep moving my object around and just brushing sort of random color on using different size brushes. Try another color here. And it's hard to tell what these colors look like now. They're going to change and look very different when they come out of the final firing. tend to go around the surface until I've covered up almost all the areas that are white with some kind of colored oxide.
that's pretty good. I've got most of that surface covered up. I've got a variety of different oxides and washes on there. And now I'll let this dry, and when it's uh, dry up, it'll be ready to load in the kiln and fire. Now I've got an upright piece here, and this is a lidded form. And before I glaze this, I had to wax the lid here and wax the inside of the lid here so that it didn't get glaze in there, those areas. Otherwise, the lid would stick when it went through the firing. So I've got wax on there. I've glazed the inside. I've glazed the outside with the clear glaze. And now I want to add some color to that. My lid on there just right. And in order to do that, I can't do it like I did on the flat bowl because when I painted that oxide on, it sat right where I put it. If I do that here, it may run down the side. So here I've got a banding wheel, and I'm going to spin this and apply the oxides in a banding fashion as it's moving around. So let's try a little bit of this. First, I want to get a dark band of oxide up here. You can see it's spinning, and then I'm just lightly applying the brush I'm trying to cover up as much of that surface as I can. That looks pretty good. And now I'll try some of these different colors. This is a blue color. See where I painted this wax on the surface, it's resisting any of the oxide from getting on that area, which is what I want it to do. I have to keep mixing these up and spinning and adding until I get. That surface covered. And I also have some wax on the lid, so I want to try to. Since I did a design up there, I want to try to incorporate that in a little bit. Carefully. So I've got a little spiraling and a little design going up the lid for that part too. Okay, so this is a way to use colored oxides and stains and wax over a clear glaze. And then the other thing that I showed you was how to use two glazes over the top of each other using wax resist to create a design in between them. This technique involves the use of two glazes and an oxide. Uh, this is the pot that I'm working with. I've glazed the inside of the pot, and then I dip the pot unevenly around this surface with a glaze called tomato red. And now I'm going to glaze the bottom area of the pot here with this glaze that's called Oribe Green. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to dip it into this pool of glaze, this container of glaze, and rock it around. And I particularly want to overlap the green glaze over the red glaze that's above it. And now I've got that on there okay. I need to wipe the bottom before I can go any further. And I've got the bottom clean. Now I'm going to put the piece on this banding wheel so that I can spin it. And in this container, I have a mixture of rutile, which is one of the oxides, and it has some 
Gersley borate in a way. It's a fluxing agent. I'm going to take this brush with the oxide on it, and as this is spinning, I'm going to brush the glaze in a kind of an undulating motion where the two glazes have overlapped on my pot, right about in the center of this form. 